Hey, hey, hey. I hope you all are having a good day. So the Lord needed me to come on today because many of us are fasting in ways that the Lord has not ordered us to do so. Um, we should find ourselves today not just fasting for the things that we want and to get a mighty move in getting a new car you know, from the hand of the Lord or to get a mighty move and getting a house from the hand of the Lord or getting a mighty move from a husband or a wife out of the hand of the Lord. But in all things that we do, it should be selflessness in it. God wants us to not only fast uh, for ourselves in, you know, walking boldly into the anointing that he has placed in us, you know, our real true purpose. You know, he tells us not to, you know, walk through life trying to seek after the things that we can get, you know. He even tells us to let not our treasures be here, but let our treasures, you know, be in heaven. The things that we want and we desire, you know, while we are here, like it or not, being in Christ, your main purpose is for his will to be done in you. Healing the sick, raising the dead, being there to lift up the head of the widow when they're down and out and they can't, you know, find anybody here to help them. God wants these people to know that he cares. And it is our purpose, our whole soul purpose to be here for the fatherless, the, the widow, the motherless, you know, be there for those people. Lift them up. Don't leave them down and hanging low and to see the poor and pass them by. And, you know, this is not the will of God. Let your fasting be in the order and in the fashion that God needs it to be so that you can walk boldly in your whole purpose as to why you are here. If we are doing it out of self-will, what is the point? And we wonder why we don't gain the things that we go after and that we, you know, that we desire. Because our heart is in the wrong place. God said in Isaiah 58 verse 6, he says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Jesus walking here on this earth, he did not only fast just so he could get the things that he desired. He was totally selfless. You know, when it came to what he wanted, he could have came here and ruled right here on this on, on the earth. He could have. He he had that type of authority, but he did not care about himself. He totally risked everything. And in the end, laying down his life for people who go after things that they can only gain for themselves when we are supposed to be walking in the same matter as of which he did while he was here. What is wrong with us? And then when we can't see the power of God in our life like he did walking here, we question it. Why? Why? But when we get down to having a deeper understanding as to why not, you know, some of us harden our hearts. God needs us to open up and to understand in this time what he is calling us to do. It goes deeper than just you. It is not about us. It is about the Lord and what he desires for us. When you begin to step out of selflessness, that is when you can see the manifestation. Think of when the people were with Jesus for three days. And, you know, they had started, you know, getting hungry and I'm pretty sure worn out and, and weak. They had went without eating for three days. Those people walked with God, not looking for, you know, what he could do for them. They were just in awe. Like, this is God. This is, look at him. He's, he's, he's healing the sick, raising the dead. They yearned for him. Some of them left everything that they had behind and, 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 and set of seeking, you know, him out and just in awe and amazed as to what he was doing while he walked here on this earth. Three days. Three days. That was what sought him to move the type of faith that the people had and the actions that they took 
It was totally selfless. The people came together as one before the sight of God. It moved Jesus so that he had to do something. It touched him so. To that man and to that woman who lives here on this earth with selfless desire, all about actually willing to help others. Your time is coming forth. You will see the hand of God like never before in your life. Most of you all have witnessed it so already. If you lift up and you have faith enough to believe, all things are possible to that man and that woman who believes. God is not through. This is not the end of your story. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it seems like. And all things keep walking forward in faith. Your faith is what gets the impossible to work and move in your life. You can fast for many days. I've seen it. People fast for 20-something, 40-something days and still don't reap anything because of the reason why they chose to do the fast in the first place. Let your fasting be as this. Exactly what God said in Isaiah 58, verse 6. That is the type of fast that you should fast for. And let your fasting be where you could withstand the enemy and walk boldly in the true calling that God has placed before you. Because the time is coming where we all have to step up and be ready. And in the end, it will be sweet victory. For those who can withstand the wires of the enemy. Let not your heart be faint. Stop worrying about the things that's going on in the world today. For God is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. You don't have to cry out to him about your needs being met. God already knows. When you start walking and moving forward in the things that he desires for you to do, when you do what he desires first, then he will take care of you. I know it to be so because he did the same thing for me. Right here where I'm living, right here, right now, is where God met me. Like never before. He kept nudging at me and nudging at me and pulling at me and tugging at me to begin the ministry. And I'm, but God, this, but God, that, can't you see this? He saw it. But what he needed from me was bigger than just me and my needs. It was greater than just me. I carried something that was meant to help many and to save many, and I was willing to delay that process for my own selfish gain, what I needed, what I wanted. And the moment I began to lay down my selfless ways, my selfish, I'm sorry, ways, was the time when God moved. He met me right here. And gave me the courage and strength to carry on. And God wants to do that for somebody today. Many people talk about how he moved for Esther after three days of fasting. But her, her fasting and her praying was not for her. It was greater than just her. She ordered that for many. She didn't go after her own selfish gain. Heck, she was already queen. She could have said, uh, forget about y'all. <laughs> y'all finna die. I'm okay. I am the queen. They can't mess with me. I'll have them killed first. But she laid aside all of that after being convicted by Mordecai, of course. But he was right. It was needed. And once she got out of feeling that she was going to be safe while other people are dying, that God would render it back to her, 
You can't hide from God. So she had to get with the program. And when she got with the program, the mighty victory was, was, was come forth. And she realized that that was the whole purpose as to why she was placed there. Because God already knew what was going to happen before it happened. And see, that's what God needs many people to understand today. Even in your flaws, nothing is hidden from God. God knows what you're going to do before you do it in the first place. So how could you feel so low and thinking that you've disappointed God? You ain't disappoint God. God already knew what action you was going to take before you decided to take it, which is why he continues to see us the way that we can't see us. His love for us, it does not change us. He constantly sees us because he already knows what we have to go through to get there. So he constantly sees us in that way, in that form, until we get there. So stop beating yourself up. Stop feeling so low. God is not calling us to a place of lowness right now. The only thing about being in a place of lowness is it helps to bring humility. Once you get to humility, then he can raise you up. But most of us, even when God seeks to raise us up out of that place of, of sadness and lowness and being in a pit, we don't see it. We don't feel that it's meant for us because of the things that we have done. But if God tells you he wants to raise you up out of that place and that joy is yours, you better believe that it is for you to be able to reap. If God says it, it's meant for you. He's not going to say something that's not meant for you. So stop doubting what God is telling you. Raise up. Trust God. Believe in his life purposes for you. He loves you. And every promise that he has made, you will see it come to pass. Lean on his understanding, not your own. Let go of your, self, of your selfishness and trust God and watch the manifestation. His word cannot return to him void. God does not lie. When that man or that woman chooses to lay down their lives to go after the sheep, you have to see a manifestation, a mighty move of God. But God does not always move when we want him to move. That's the first thing that you have to understand. There is nothing that you can do to force God's hand to move. His time is going to be his time. You can fast, you can pray, you can do whatever you want. But until you gain understanding in the areas he needs you to gain understanding in, certain life events are going to happen because God needs you to know when he pulls you out, you can't return back down which that way you've came. You've got to keep pushing forward. You've got to go through the fire. It's the only way you're going to reach the other end to what he has for you. There are no easy corners or curves that you can take. You can fast, fast all you want. But if God ain't in it, I'm sorry. Ain't nothing going to happen. That is the truth. I've tried it. That's why I can stand up here and talk to you all about this today. You could do whatever you want. Shut out whoever you want, but God's will is still his will and his time is still his time. That is the truth. You all be blessed. I love you all and you all have a great day.